Right, we're going to take a look at basic concepts of probability, and that's chapter 4. It starts off with an example. Um, a certain family has had 17 male births in a row over a few generations. Not talking about one mother who had 17 boys. But over a few generations, we've only had 17 males. Uh, there's, you know, uncles and, and nephews and all of that. 17 male births in a row. Uh, this shouldn't happen. This is very unlikely. If we assume that this family has an equal, uh, equal probability of male versus female births with each pregnancy, then the chances of this occurring are roughly 1 in 130,000. There are basically two possibilities. Either A, the um, assumption is correct that this family really does have a 50-50 uh, chance of having a boy or girl every time. Or B, the assumption is incorrect. Okay, well, let's think about this. If this assumption is correct, then um, what we've observed would be very, very, very unlikely. But we did observe it. It did happen. So we can't rule that out. The probability of it, of it being possibility A is very, very low. It is much more likely that it's B, that the assumption is incorrect. The more likely explanation is that uh, the assumption is wrong. A is very unlikely. The probability is definitely against it. So B is the much more likely scenario. Likely. Oh, the L goes right there. Much more likely scenario. This is an example of the rare event rule. The rare event rule. If, um, if we make an assumption about something, and then observe an event, uh, uh, a happening, an outcome. We observe an event that is uh, extremely unlikely. based on the assumption. Then the assumption is probably wrong. Now, does that prove that it's wrong? No, it doesn't. It doesn't prove anything. It just puts a whole lot of doubt on the assumption. It makes us doubt the assumption. Now, this actually happened to me. Um, my, my family line had 17 male births in a row. My father had a brother, and uh, you know my uncle only had boys who only had boys, and I only have brothers, and then I have two boys, and one of my brothers has a boy. 17 male births in a row. And we were beginning to think that it's not possible for us to have a girl. Well. In the last couple of years, two of my brothers had baby girls, so it is possible, but it's still, it's it, the much more likely explanation is that we don't have a 50-50 chance of having boys or girls with each birth. So that's the rare event rule. And that's going to govern a lot of what we do uh, in, this, in this chapter and in this course 
as a whole. We're not going to be able to prove a lot of stuff with statistics. What we can do is we can show that a basic assumption, uh, a particular assumption that we're looking at, would cause an observed event, an observed event, to be very, very, very unlikely. But we did observe the event, so the assumption is probably incorrect. Not necessarily, but probably. That's what we're doing a lot of in this course. We show that the probability of something happening is very, very low. So something's wrong about our assumption. All right. Well, let's get into some definitions. Uh, technically, that was in section 4.2. Here in 4.1, we have an event. An event is a collection of results. We have a single result as a single that happened. An event is really uh, a collection of them. So in this case, we had 17 male births in a row. Each one of those births would be considered a result, and the event would be the collection of those results, or outcomes of a procedure. In this case, the procedure was making babies. And then we have a simple event. And a simple event is uh, an outcome or an event that cannot be further broken down. Uh, broken down into uh, simpler components. For example, we roll a uh, six-sided die three times. And we observe two fives and one three. Well, this is not a simple event because this could be broken down this could be broken down into 5, 5, 3 where the first row was a 5, second row was a 5, and third row was a 3 or 5, 3, 5 or 3, 5, 5 those are all simple events which would all result in the same event of two fives and one three. Okay, and then we have uh, sample space. The sample space is the um, the basically the collection or the set of all possible simple events for a procedure. So this procedure of rolling a six out of die three times, five five three or five three five or three five five are not technically the same outcome. They're not all technically the same event. They're uh, three separate simple events. Now in a lot of cases when they may consider the same, if all we're doing is adding up those three values and they all result in a total of 13. But if it was a situation where I was playing some board game and I rolled a 5 and a 5 and a 3 or maybe I roll a 5 and then a 3 and then a 5, well that would result in me landing on different spaces on the game board. And so the 5, 5, 3 may result in my first move. I move five spaces and I might land on, you know, lose a turn or go back two spaces or something but if I roll a 355 I might never land on that same spot so in some contexts those would be considered three separate events and in other contexts we might consider them all the same